Hi, Sarah here, Spectrum Weavers. I'm going to show you how to correct the kerning error in Cricut Design Space. Kerning is letter spacing and alignment. Uh, we all know that when you type something into Design Space, the spacing with the letters is wrong. So a lot of people will tell you to detach and um, move your letters closer together or to reduce the spacing in your letters, um, up up here, there's a there's a way to reduce the spacing when you're clicked on. If you go like this and you go to letter space right here, it'll make them closer together. That's not the correct way. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do it correctly in an ex external program called Inkscape. Inkscape is a free design program um, that you can fix or work around a lot of the design um, deficiencies and outside design programs like Design Space. Um, so in, in Inkscape, the trusted place to download it is inkscape.org, or I believe you can also get it through the Microsoft Store, a free app if you're on Windows 10. So let's go ahead, let's start off. I'm also going to show you um, there's, there's another benefit to designing externally. Cricut Design Space does not recognize contextual ligatures, which are um, font designers build them into the font. This TT right here, that's a contextual ligature. The GA is, um, I think there's another one in here. Oh, the, the BU. So anytime you type into a font that has contextual ligatures, that specific uh, letter pattern in that order, like the TT like that, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna come out as looking like that, the TT, not like this. Same thing with the GA. When you type GA in that order, that's how it's gonna come out when it's typed into a program like Inkscape. It's gonna come out exactly like the font designer intended it. And just, I mean, you can, you can tell the difference. So, you know, this down here, this looks kind of bargain basement. Even if you were to respace that, that doesn't look great. Up here, that's exactly how the font designer intended it. And on top of that, you didn't have to, you know, I mean, it, it takes a long time for people to try to, you know, I know I used to do it before I, before I knew all of this, try to respace the letters, you're guessing, you're trying to, you know, whatever, move them around and hope they fit together. You don't have to do that anymore. Every single time that you type text, it's going to come out exactly correct. And it's going to be so quick once you see how to do it. So let's go ahead and we'll get rid of all of this first. Select all and delete. And now we'll go over to Inkscape, okay? So the first thing we're going to do right here. Oh, let me get this where you can see it. Okay. So right here over on the left-hand side, you'll see the letter A. That is your text button, okay? Oh, and then, well, I want to show you something else first, actually, real quick. So I'm going to go to new and, oh, darn it. So I'm going to have to resize the screen. But when, when you open a new, uh, this is important that I show it to you. I wouldn't be wasting my time on it. When you open uh, Inkscape for whatever reason, and I don't know what that reason is, it opens up with your page preview very small. So the way that you fix that, sorry, I hate to waste time on this, but it's an important thing for you to know. Um, so the way that you fix that, I have two open. I'm trying to toggle between the two. So you can see how tiny that page, mm, frustrating when you have two open. It's not letting me do it. Anyways, so you can see how small that page preview is. What you want to do to bring that up to size is press the plus button on your keyboard. And the plus button is a really easy way to bring that up to size. The minus button brings it back down for, you know, if you want to do that. Anyways, I didn't want to waste time on that, but it's important that you know that because it's kind of a hassle when you first open it. It's always going to be small. Press the plus button. It'll bring it up to size. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do, go to... The letter A, okay, and up here on the left hand side on the top, that's your font drop down. Okay, I'm going to bring it to garlic butter. Okay, 
okay and you have to click the a again and then click it on your board i don't know why that is okay and i'm going to type out hello my name is sarah okay so now i'm going to want to stretch this because obviously it's kind of small so you're going to go back up to your pointer okay click on that upper left hand corner when you see these arrows around it that means it's selected you want to grab one of the corners but before you do it if you were to just stretch it like this it's not going to stretch um, equally so to keep it in proportion press the control button on your keyboard while you're stretching it and that keeps it in proportion okay so hello my name is Sarah you can see all all of the contextual ligatures in here this is a really pretty font. I don't know if I mentioned it. It's called Garlic Butter. That is actually the name of it. It's a Missy Meyer font. Um, I, I'll actually link it on the bottom of this video where you can get it. It's, it's one of my favorite fonts. So you can see all the contextual ligatures. That LLO, I, I think that that's one solid one. Either the LL or the LLO. I think I think the LLO is probably one as a whole. Um, that RA is definitely one. I'll show you when we bring it over to, to design space, the difference. So, okay, hello, my name is Sarah. So now you can't just save this as an SVG and bring that over to design space. It won't work, okay? What you need to do is you need to go to path. See right next to object in the very top? See where my pointer is? So path. Oh, let me take it back. You need to actually make sure that it's selected first. So make sure you're selected when you do this. And then go to path. And then go to object to path. Now there's one more step that you have to do. So your pointer, right underneath your pointer, see it says edit paths by nodes. You have to click on that. Okay. Now go to file, go to save as. You can save it as an Inkscape SVG, that's fine. I'll save it as hello 2002. Okay. I'll go back over to design space, go to upload. Upload image, browse, and then hello 2002. Okay, and now go to open and save. And click on it, insert image. There you go. Now it you can see that it all comes out, comes through a separate. You can select the whole thing and weld it. That'll make it one solid piece. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the difference. Okay. So if I had taken this and I had typed this already on garlic butter and I had typed this out. Hello. My name is Sarah. Uh, mm -hmm, that takes so long. Okay. I'm going to reduce this so you can see it. Reduce it down to 40. That should be plenty. Or maybe not. Reduce it because it's so spaced out. Okay. Okay, so you can see the difference, not just in the spacing, but do you see how much better it looks when it's correct and how the font designer intended it and has those contextual ligatures? I mean, it's just a better product. And I mean, I'm telling you, everything that you do will come out better if you do it this way. Uh, make sure you subscribe. I have lots of videos that I'm going to be coming out with to show you how to fix some of those deficiencies or work around them in Inkscape. Um, so, you know, go ahead and subscribe and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.